The aim of this protest is to address the hardship and hunger in Nigeria presently. But adding to that hunger and hardship is also an housing crisis in Abuja, where people have to, with, with six times of your salary, you will still be living far away at the outskirts of the town. And this is not something that should be obtainable in any country that is responsible to its citizens. We have also raised the fact that the sacrifice that uh, the government claims to be making, they are not making any sacrifices. They are actually making us, the people, the sacrifices for them to keep being rich. Um, to move to the last section, protest is our democratic right. We stand with Nigerians, and the time for mass struggle is now. This might be the major part which is most controversial about this press conference. And it is that since the, the, uh, the charter for a protest has started earlier this month, the federal government has come out in many ways to try to discourage us from protesting. We, our parents did not fight against the military. They did not fight against the military, lose their lives fighting against the military just for us to come and lose the right to protest. Because the right to protest is the most sacrosanct part of, the, of, of, of democracy. In fact, many people who do not know about the fact that we are supposed to have a protest about hunger and hardship are going to be coming to this protest just because they are angry at the fact that they are telling us to not protest. We should equivocally state that Nigerians have the right to protest, peaceful assembly, and free speech. No government, no matter the number of votes you got in an election, has the right to stop the people from dissenting. And what we've seen recently is that the government has been threatening, and they are saying that because of the issues of national security, that we should not embark on the protest, that they have intelligence, that some people want to hijack the protest and make it violent. Please, the go a responsible government, by now, if they are saying that since like two weeks ago, by now you have identified those people who want to cause violence and take them out of the space. And so that we that want to do peaceful protests can peacefully protest. But they are not doing that. Instead, they are asking us to not protest. Now, the demands of our protest, the question is that in a democracy, I can decide I want to protest for anything. The demand of the protest should not be justified. So one of the arguments that they've been making is that our demands are not justified. Tinubu is still working. The demands of a protest does not have to be justified before we can have a protest. And so this is the point we are making. We are saying that if Nigeria is going to be a democracy, Nigerians, the government should be urging Nigerians to exercise their rights to be citizens of their country, which is their right to protest. Our government should understand that an unused right is an abused right. And so we are going to use our, our right to protest by August 1. On this basis, we support the call of mass protests by Nigerians everywhere across the country. That protests should start by August 1 to address all of these issues with the theme of end bad governance. We will not fold our hands. Why political office orders mislead our country into ruin and peril and hardship and hunger and poverty. Last but not the least, let us make it clear that the security uh, threat that the government has been giving us, we hear it very loud and clear. We are not leaders of the protest. We are mobilizers of the protest. Just like answers, our protest is the protest of the masses. No leaders are going to be picked up. No leaders are going to be um, uh, coerced and manipulated to relinquish our struggle until our demands are met. On that basis, we would like to state clearly that we are using this opportunity to warn the Nigerian police that if you want to come to our protest, please come and come and protest against your unpaid salary. Come and protest against your low salary, your low allowances. Come and protect protesters. Come and pro protect protesters. Please do not come to incite violence in our protest. No state agent or agent provocateurs should come to our protest to incite violence. They will be dealt with decisively, and not by us. We can only promise that we will mobilize for protest. We will not stop Nigerian masses from defending themselves. If they have been attacked, if they have learned from NSAS and the massacres that, that, that was the major feature of NSAS, we will not stop them from defending themselves. And so we are warning the Nigerian government to not incite violence.
because they have history of inciting violence during protests. We still have pictures of people holding machetes, attacking protesters in Lagos. We must also state this clearly, that some have said that our protest is because we want to install a military government. We detest military dictatorship. Let that be loud and clear. Our protest is for our right to live as human beings in our own country. And for that reason, we do not support a military takeover. And so nobody should blackmail us that those are protesting are in support of a military takeover of Nigeria. We are exercising a democratic right, which is the right to protest. And on, and on, and on that basis, we want to also warn the military that Nigerians have learned from Leki Massacre yes. and other massacres during the answers. We want to warn the DSS that we have learned over the years. And we will not stay silent because you can beat people, but they will defend themselves. And we will not be responsible for that. It will be on the, it will be the cross of the Nigerian government. Every protester is a leader of that protest. And if they are asking that who are those that have mobilized for this protest, the simple answer is that it is the Tinubu government and, 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 and the cronies of the government themselves who have mobilized for this protest through the economic hardship they've melted on Nigerians. Because we ask, the problem of insecurity, does it exist? The answer is yes. The problem of hunger, does it exist? The answer is yes. Of economic hardship, does it exist? The answer is yes. And the government changed the national term just recently. But the national term on the street has not changed. It's that of hunger, insecurity, and poverty in the midst of abundance. And uh, of course, to also try to point out that uh, just uh, last week, the government embarked on some sinister attempts to uh, demobilize and harass Nigerians. In Kano and Sokoto, Nigerians youth, about two persons were arrested by the DSS. We are also using this opportunity to call for their immediate release. Attempt to arrest or harass or intimidate protesters would not be accepted by us. And uh, to also point out uh, the NSAS protest, because uh, in the media these days, the government keeps asking us not to protest because they don't want what happened uh, during NSAS to repeat itself. I have said this repeatedly. The NSAS protest, uh, all of us here were part of it. Uh, no protester came to the protest with machetes. No protester came with the protest with gun. Protesters joined the protest with placards, for a Nigerian flag, and their voices for it to be heard. Those who unleashed attack, violence on the NSAS protest are first the Nigerian police in Lagos, Abuja, and the key places where the protests organized. In Abuja here, the, on the very first day, the police attacked the protests at Bega uh, on, on, on Bridge. Protesters were attacked there so that we are not uh, people who are, who, are, who are not peaceful. But it is the government that should be advised not to embark on what they embark on doing the answers by intimidating, attacking, and even killing Nigerian youth who are all out to seek for a good uh, governance. So we want to make our demands clear. Uh, of course, we've uh, explained some of these uh, things before now. But to get it uh, clear, the first demand we are making is that uh, the government should not just tell us about sacrifice and patience. They must also demonstrate it from their hand, which is why we are stating clearly as our first demand that if the government is truly responsible or ready to uh, initiate discussion with Nigerian youth, the first step should be that all political office holders, both elected and appointed, must be placed on the same salary structure, salary scheme with Nigerian workers. We don't want a society where workers will be subjected to 70,000 naira minimum wage. And people who are just meant to work for four years, either elected or appointed, will be going home 
with millions and billions of naira in their account. We feel that one of the problems we have is that Nigerian people, uh, uh, those who claim to be leading us and people who are being led, we live in a sharply different economic reality. It is the reality of an economic system where Nigerians have to uh, go to uh, hospitals that, that are not well equipped, why our leaders have to fly to America, Dubai, or so for medical tourism, which is why we are making this as the first point of call that all, both elected and appointed political officers, must be placed on the same salary structure with Nigerian workers. And secondly, we identified that the increment in fuel price and tariff of electricity is uh, one of the major factors that led to the decline in the economic condition of the Nigerian masses. And we are calling for the reversal of all of the increments that, uh, that have been carried out since the emergence of the Tinubu administration. Therefore, we are demanding that fair price and electricity tariff to be returned back to the price it was uh, before May 29, 2023. And again, we reject the proposed or the recently announced minimum wage of 70,000 naira for Nigerian workers. We believe that, based on calculation, even from the labor leaders themselves, who had calculated that for Nigerian workers to survive, we need to earn at least 615,000 naira in a month. And also refer to the World Bank speculation that as far back as 2022, that uh, the extreme poverty line is $2.15, which will mean that in Nigeria of today, 3,000 naira per day for someone who can be categorized to be someone who is extremely poor. And there's no justification why Nigerian workers should be in that category, which is why we feel that the 70,000 naira that was passed recently is grossly inadequate and insufficient for Nigerian workers to live. Therefore, we are demanding that should be reviewed and to a sum not less than 250,000 naira for Nigerian workers. And also, we are demanding for a progressive taxation system where the poor people do not have to pay for the enjoyment of the wealthy people. A tax system, taxation system that will take into account the inequality and the wealth gap between the rich and the poor. Also, we note that within the last one year, essentially since the Tinubu government announced the student loan scheme, which we have expressed that this scheme itself is nothing but an attempt to turn Nigerian students into debtors. And we state clearly that the, that the Nigerian state has enough resources to ensure that Nigerians get education that is quality, affordable, and free. We have lived in this same Nigeria where many of the leaders today benefited from a free education system and, the, and for which we included free food given to, to Nigerian students at a point. I mean, that was even at the point where the major uh, source of revenue of, of Nigeria was not even as large as it is today. So that there's no reason why Nigerians should become debtors just because they want to benefit from education. And we noted that recently, all the major uh, universities, polytechnic and colleges, including the unity schools, have increased their school fees astronomically, exorbitantly. And we are calling for total reversal of all of the fees that, that have been increased from Uniben to OAU to Unilag to, to polytechnics in Nasarawa and everywhere that has been increased. We are demanding for immediate reversal of all school fees that have been increased within the last uh, one year. And we also take note of the oil and gas sector that despite talks from the government over the years, despite budgeting billions of naira for the refineries that they claim they want to make functional, what is obtainable today is that none of these uh, 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 
final this. Despite uh, getting billions yearly, it's working. So that we are demanding that all of our public refineries should be fixed and made functional. And we are also demanding that the process of building new ones should also commence. Of course, today, there are talks around the Dangote uh, refinery. And what we are stating is that if, if, if the near government have not neglected our public refineries over the years, there will be need for us to rely on Dangote, who is all out to make profit out of our common uh, resources. And we have seen examples of this even in other aspects of the economy, which has been placed in the hands of private profiteers. So we are demanding that our own public refineries should be made functional and building on new ones to commence. And we also state that despite after four years, the NSAS protests, we still have many of the youth who were arrested during that protest, and even after that protest, many are still languishing in different prisons today in Nigeria. Many who lost grossly part of their body or even their economic uh, life due to from, uh, during that process have not become be comp comp compensated. And also take note, recently, the Equal Court of Justice claimed that a found in the Nigerian government guilty of gross human rights abuses during the NSAS protests. We we'll take this call serious and continue to demand that all those officers and those who are uh, complicit in the attack, killing of, of protesters during the NSAS protests, especially the Mleki massacre, we need to bring them uh, to justice. So we are still demanding for justice for the NSAS uh, pro uh, protest. And we're also making this call to demand that during, before, or after the protest that has been declared to start on August 1st, no protesters, no protesters should be arrested, attacked, or harassed by any of the security operatives. What we are demanding for is an end to bad governance, not an end to our life, not an end to our freedom. So on this note, we also want to demand from the FCT administration, as I have uh, uh, said already, aside in the national crisis we have, even in Abuja here, there are millions of issues affecting residents and workers residing in, in Abuja. And our first demand is that we demand an immediate cessation of all demolition that displaces families and communities without adequate compensation. We believe that, because so far the, the excuse has been that we need to develop some of these areas. But development should not kill the well-being of Nigerians. You, you, for you cannot displace thousands of people without providing alternative accommodation for them temporarily within the period you want to use or develop that land for. Because the problem you have is that people have to go into streets, become emergency hoodlums, become thieves, and cause another social crisis for us. A serious and responsible government must have such insight and see that even if, if, even if there's need to demolish a place, it must be to first discuss democratically with the residents who will be the major people that will be affected from that uh, demolition and give them an alternative accommodation both for those who are living or engaging in economic activities in that area. And ensure that when these projects are completed, these persons are also returned back to their uh, original state. Because what we've, what we've had in, in recent period is that once you develop a place, people who are living there before will, will not be able to afford the cost of uh, procuring procure other house or even shops in that place before. Because we've seen different examples where lands are hijacked to build estates. Estates where they have to pay billion, uh, uh, millions of naira to acquire. And the workers are not opportune to uh, get some of this uh, structure. So, so we are demanding that the, uh, 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 demolitions should be stopped and where there is need for uh, building of new structures, it should be built with the aim of making it affordable 
to workers and residents in Abuja. We also demand street regulation to control rate increases and prevent exploitation practices by landlords. Housing should be affordable and accessible to all, not the luxury for the few. And we state this with a clear belief that housing itself is a right. Nigerians, Nigerian workers, youth deserve to live under comfortable and conducive environment. So that the government itself should not leave housing sector in the hands of developers, estates, and profiteers who are all out to make profit. And just themselves, the housing sector must see how they build houses that can accommodate Nigerian workers, Nigerian youth. Houses that will be affordable and accessible to Nigerian uh, youth. Also, we demand the utilization and repurposing of the numerous empty estates scattered around Abuja to provide housing for those in need. These properties should be used to elevate homelessness and improve living conditions for all residents. People who are conversant with Abuja who, uh, note that today we have many estates unoccupied. unoccupied, empty, because people who want to be living there cannot afford what it takes to live in, in these places. So we are demanding that these estates should be repurposed and given to Nigerian workers who are in need of uh, such uh, facilities. Also, we demand the reduction or elimination of, of the heavy taxes imposed on inf informal workers who are already struggling to make ends meet. These workers are the backbone of our local economy and deserve fair treatment and support. So comrades, these are the demands that we are making from, from, from the Nigerian government. And we hope to drive home these demands by calling on Nigerian youth not to be scared in, in, in their own land. For Nigeria belongs to all of us. Nigeria must, must not be scared of, of coming out to protest. So we are enjoining Nigerians to come out on August 1st as the point of protest which we are going to make public very soon to come and exercise their democratic rights on August 1 and beyond. We are, we are also using this opportunity to call on the Nigerian Labour Congress and the TUC not to become onlookers in this protest. We are demanding that NSC and TUC must also give support to this protest and back it up with a nationwide strike action coupled with this protest that we are, demand, are demanding. So we are calling on NSC and TUC as a matter of, of urgency to also demand a call for general strike action in Nigeria. We must state clearly that protest is not just a democratic right. Protest is also a democratic thing in itself. And so, from those of us who are here, personally, I have a history of 10 years protesting as an activist in Nigeria. And that means that if we are protesting, our culture is that a protest is a democratic place. A protest is a place where the people converge and have a congress of themselves, of the masses within themselves. And in that democratic setup, what we use that democratic setup is not just to address the concerns of the protest, it's to also look at the conduct of the protest to ensure that when we democratically are together, we can fish out if anybody has been sent into our midst. That is the culture of a protest. That is the proper culture of a protest. A proper protest should have a congress in it of the people coming together and discussing. It is in that discussion that we detect if there are any security threats to us. And the second uh, question about the fact that Tinubu himself was a protester at some point. Interestingly, we have videos already online where Tinubu was actually protesting against forest subsidy removal. So it is, it is very, 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 very wrong of an elderly person. It is, in Yoruba culture, an elderly person should not be lying. And so it is a lie that protest is not our right. And so if Tilbu can protest, we can also protest because he protested as part of a democratic process. And if possible, if Nigerians are protesting, if they decide that Tinubu should join their protest, no problem. 
But it is best that if anybody in the ruling class, in the political elite, wants to participate in this kind of protest, they should first go and eat to the demands of the protest. Because if they don't eat the demands of the protest and join protesters, we cannot guarantee whatever happens to The last thing, the demands of our protest has been read out. But the main point is that all of the policies, the anti-people policies that were has rolled out since May 29, 23, all of them should be reversed. Thank you very much. Uh,